Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn Guzman with Investing News Network. I'm speaking with Geraldine Delian Koo, Chief Scientific Officer of Serona Biochem, about an exciting new development of the company's proprietary TFC 1326 compound. Welcome, Geraldine. Thank you. Pleasure to be there with you today. Yeah, so I know that there's some uh, some exciting news about the TFC 1326, but we've, before we get into that, could you give us a backgrounder of what the TFC 1326 is and how it was developed? Yes, yes, it's a, it's a long story, but I will try to make it short. Um, as you know, especially in drug discovery, we learn a lot from nature. So I was, uh, as a scientist, long time ago, interested in antifreeze glycoprotein, which is found in polar fish and allow them to survive at low temperature. Uh, this compounds, especially for natural compounds, are uh, very unusual uh, chemical structure, uh, which consists of repeating units of three amino acid and two saccharide, like a polymeric natural compounds, and it has an amazing properties of protecting uh, species against stress and especially against cold stress and cold damage. And um, I start to find, we start to work on this family of compounds uh, some times ago, and, uh, and we, uh, we try to mimic them in order to improve their stability and to build a, a library of compounds with um, a smaller size. Uh, our intent at first was to develop the protective effect of this natural compound, and especially for different type of stress, like oxidative stress. So we built a, a portfolio of several compounds with, which shows amazing properties in cell protection against stress, and 1326 was part of it. It was obtained accidentally at first, our intent was to produce another compound, and during the reaction process, a secondary product was formed. We spent some time to run experiments to try to identify its chemical structure, and and finally, uh, we were able to solve to, to solve it, and uh, and so the name of was given of 1326. But this compound has a slightly different chemical structure from the other one of the family, and this small differentiation make him particularly attractive for cosmetic application because it can have a better permeation within the skin. So at first we evaluated on um, skin protection, cell protection like fibroblast protection against stress, but also in genomic study. It gives, like all the compounds of the library, very good results. And uh, but we, we decided to put it to put it further in uh, in other in vitro assays for further evaluation, and you have to keep in mind that in 80% of the aging, uh, of the visible sign of aging uh, within the skin, is due to external stress. So external factors such as oxidative stress, UV, uh, pollution, uh, tobacco, and this visible sign of aging include um, um, skin dryness, include du duller skin, um, fine line, wrinkles, and loose and sagging skin. And, and this is due to a decrease of lipid production within the skin, a decrease of the collagen, a decrease of the fat which is present in the deeper layer of the skin. And this is all related to a specific chronic uh, inflammatory state that occurs within the skin during aging. So with this, with this compound, with the first evaluation, we were very pleased to have a protective effect because we saw, you saw a, a, a huge part of the aging, of the visible sign of aging that will occur within the skin thanks to that. But in addition, we observed that this family of compound, and especially 1326, leads to an increase of lipid production, which was an, is an issue in the aging, an increase of the collagen synthesis, an increase also of the hyaluronic acid synthesis, 
and a strong and an amazing reduction of the inflammation process. So this gives a, a huge opportunity for these compounds to be developed. And what was very surprising for us is that all the results that we obtained in the in vitro study translate very well in the clinical trial. Yes, and then let's talk about that clinical trial. So you've recently uh, released some highlights of that clinical trial. Can you talk about that? Yes, we performed this clinical trial on 20 volunteers with a very simple formulation because the objective was to see the efficacy of the active, so of 1326 itself. So a simple formulation which includes 1% of 1326 applied twice a day, so morning and evening, during three months. And uh, and it leads to uh, amazing results and improve of the skin radiance by 25%, a decrease of the oval, um, uh, the, yeah, the oval facial uh, sagging by 14%, a strong, very strong decrease of inflam both inflammation and oxidation by 54%, and an increase dense, of, the, of the density of the skin by 20, by 37%. Sorry. And, and this result was really amazing because if you think about um, what oxidation uh, in the skin, oxidation leads to chronic inflammation. And both of them are the, ma are the major contributor of skin aging, of visible skin aging. So if we solve that by reducing the inflammation, we solve part of the dysfunction that occurs within the cells that lead also to a decrease of the skin density. So we can solve all the issue of the skin aging on the process of the skin aging with this agent. And it's really like if um, 1326 uh, restore the, the, the cell and the tissue at a younger state, uh, a bit like a rejuvenation cure. So it make them, it renders them at the same level of efficacy when they were younger. So it's what we saw amazing results. And what maybe was the most impressive in the results was the picture, uh, where really you can see the improvement uh, on the skin radiance, of course, and uh, on the overall uh, face uh, shape. And uh, and uh, I think what was uh, also very pleasant for us is that uh, the dermatologists which follow the clinical trial told, told us that first the people was very pleased by the results, of course, but they have, which were particularly unusual, people from their surrounding which ask them, what have you done? You changed something, you did something on your face. And and that was pretty amazing because usually it's something that is not as noticeable than that. Right, that's very interesting. So during the clinical trial, how long did it take to get um, these uh, uh, results? I would say, I, I don't know before. So the only thing that I know is after two months, because we put a first, a first step to do run the analysis by the CMO at two months. So during the first two months, I don't know if there was improvement because nothing has been analyzed during this period. So after two months, we already see a, a big improvement in the oxidative, the inflammatory a little bit, but of course it starts also by the oxidation and then uh, oxidation leads to inflammation. So oxidation was first greatly improved and then inflammation in the second part was greatly improved as a follow-up of this pathway. And uh, and the overall uh, skin uh, sagging was uh, improved since the beginning. So, but not, um, we didn't perform any uh, analysis before two months. So we don't know in the first step, but I think it takes time for this product to achieve uh, its result because it has to, to resolve all the oxidative issue, all the inflammatory issue in order to restore the cell at a, at a younger state. Yeah, that's definitely good news for uh, people looking for some anti-aging products. Yeah. Um, so what are the next steps? 
Right now, so there, there is um, different things ongoing. We are um, conducting uh, a process development in order to produce these compounds because it starts at first in the lab, so on milligram stage and after on gram stage in order to do the clinical trial. So now we have a 500 grams production ongoing in, with our partner in China. So where he will solve the issue that, you know, usually occur in the development. And, uh, and uh, in the same time, we have uh, ongoing discussion with different partners that have shown interest in, into this uh, compound and this family of compound also. Uh, we also will, um, uh, we have soon an event at the biopartnering in Boston where we also we share with other prospects uh, best results. So in order to find a, a way to license uh, these compounds. We also think about um, potentially maybe uh, do another performing another clinical trial in order to maximize the value of these compounds by maybe putting other other option like for example looking at the neck what can be done on the neck or looking also at other wrinkles like the nasolabial fold or the the vertical line of of the lips. Uh, to see if we can have some improvement also and some plumping effect on this. So this is something that we right now try to figure out uh, what could be uh, all the next stage on that. Right. So the ones that you've done, is that um, over now? So the clinical trials that you've done, that you've had results for, is that still ongoing or? No, the one the one that we've done is finished now. Yeah. So it will be maybe another one if... Um, uh, the, the, the really the target is to maximize to maximize the value of the compounds to do a, a very good licensing deal. Proper. All right. Well, we'll certainly look forward to more news coming from your company about this promising new compound. Thank you. I hope soon. Thank you. And thanks everyone. Join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insight.